says those that are believers, those that become believers, then we baptize them. And, and once uh, that, that begins to happen and that person is following Christ in baptism, then what, what Peter said in Acts chapter 2, he, if you remember what I just read, he said that we uh, then are, are baptizing people for the forgiveness of sins. Or in other words, uh, because of uh, forgiveness of sins. Amen. What, uh, what I'm saying is when we are, are coming into a place of being baptized, it, it is just testifying we're being baptized because we've been forgiven. We've been set free from our sins. And so we come to that time that we are, uh, that's why are you baptized? Because I've been forgiven. Because uh, of, of the sins that Jesus Christ has cleansed for me. And this is a testimony that I am going into baptismal waters. And this is what has happened. I was I was dead and I was buried. Uh, the old man was buried. And now I'm raised again and new, in the newness of life. Amen. As a cleansed individual. The waters don't cleanse you. Uh, the blood of Jesus cleanses you, but but the waters it, it's a it's a wonderful symbol of the uh, of the mercy and the grace of the Lord and the forgiveness of God. We are buried. The old man is put to death, and the new man is arising alive in Christ. Amen. How many is thankful for being forgiven? Amen. Amen. And then he, he goes on and says, and you baptize them, and this was Jesus talking, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that has been a source of contention in some circles and at times. And, but I want to just let you know that this is not just a formula. Some would try to say that it's just a formula to follow when we baptize, and, and that, but it, it's, it's far more than that because what Jesus was teaching us is it uh, is a statement of faith. There's faith in God as as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's faith in in Jesus as the one and only begotten Son of God that was given on behalf of of the world for their sins. And then faith in the Holy Ghost as the Comforter for every believer, the Comforter that that uh, the the Father sent. Uh, uh, amen. To to give us uh, help in our time of need. I'm so thankful. That he didn't leave us alone, but he sent us another comforter to uh, empower us as the church. Amen. And so it's also not only a, a, a statement of faith, but a commitment uh, to follow God who, who is showing his commitment to us. When, when you look at what Jesus did in the book of John, he referenced the, the following truths of the, of the Trinity. He said to God, he was uh, uh, showing a, a commitment to God as his heavenly father. To himself as the, as the son of God and to the Holy Spirit as that other comforter who was going to lead believers into all truth. He's going to lead you in the ways that you need to go. And so for this reason, Jesus confirmed that when he was about to ascend to heaven, he told uh, the believers, he said that he would not uh, leave us orphaned or abandoned. Now, let me just read it to you. John 14, verse 16, he says, and I will ask the father. And he will give you another advocate or another comforter who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it is, isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives within you or with you and now and later will be in you, he was telling them. Verse 18, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. And when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and my Father, uh, uh, that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. So what he was saying is, I'm about to be crucified. This is backtracking just a little bit. He says, I'm going to be crucified, but you don't need to worry because you're not going to be left alone. You think it's hopeless. You think you're all by yourself. But I don't I, I don't know if you've forgotten, but I just want to remind you, Jesus hadn't forgotten you. He is uh, has gone to the to the heavens to be uh, on the right hand of the Father interceding for us, but he says 
and he's fulfilled his promise. He sent another comforter to go with us. The Holy Spirit is here with us today. Amen. I, I was telling Crystal the other day, it, it just, uh, I was having some time of just, uh, I was kind of down and depressed and discouraged. Y'all never do that. I know y'all are always happy and always smiling. And everything's always going great. Sometimes I get discouraged. How about you? And I started looking, I just need something to encourage me. I thought, I need to, just something to encourage me. What do I do? I need to eat something. I need to do something. I need to go somewhere. And, and I, I thought, my goodness, I've been serving the Lord all this time. And I just, the Lord just reminded, do you remember what the fruit of the Spirit are? Uh, love, joy, peace, long suffering, all, all these things. And we always think of all these things uh, that will help us not to do uh, bad stuff and all that, that we have self control and, and, and that we don't uh, lash out and we do all this. And, and we, you know, but, but we've got to remember that first part. We have love and joy and peace. Amen. And I thought, Holy Spirit, just manifest yourself in me. Your, your presence is here, and I'm trying to look for everything else just to encourage me and, and get this little uh, cloud off of me when I know that the, it's just part of the manifestation of the presence of God, the fruit of the Spirit living on the inside of me. And I mean, things begin to turn around, and I begin to look to Him for my joy and Him for my strength and Him for my peace and Him, I was just reminded that He is watching over us and He hasn't left us by ourselves. We don't have to just barely make it through this life. Amen. We can walk in the joy and the peace and the, and the trust and the loving care of the Lord God, our, our Father. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Then finally, concerning baptism, it's just, it's a public declaration of our identity in Christ. This world is, are so, you hear so much about identity nowadays. There's identity thefts, there's uh, mixed up identities, there's gender identities. And you hear this term over and over and over and over. But you know what we as believers have to remember who is who our identity is in Christ. Amen. We're not defeated. We're not overwhelmed. We're not beaten down. We're not uh, at the end of our rope. Amen. We are in Christ, and Christ always causes us to triumph, the Scripture says. And so baptism is a public declaration of our identity in Christ, in the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ. Baptism is to be, one writer put it like this, is to be an immediate sign that a person is now stepping out of the unbelieving ranks and taking his stand with Christ. It's through the death and the burial, the resurrection of Jesus, that we now have new life in him. When we're baptized, we're saying, I've been transformed from death to life, from darkness to light in Christ. So it's an immediate sign of a person stepping out of the unbelieving ranks and becoming a believer. Amen. But it is also... An identifying sign that a person is stepping out of the unbelieving to the believing. Amen. From darkness to light. It's just a it's a, it's a it's a sign to, to let the world know that hey, I'm identified in Christ. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26 it says, As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south, down to the desert road. That runs to Jerusalem to, to Gaza. And so he started out and along the way he met someone who was walking down or, or uh, sitting in a, in, a, in a cart. And the scripture says in, down in verse 35 when Philip began uh, to talk to the individual. He asked him, do you know what you're, you're uh, reading? And he said, how would I know what I'm reading unless I may teach it to me? And so, so that's when Philip picks up in verse 35. He says, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture where the man was reading, the eunuch was reading, he preached Jesus to him. And now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? And then Philip said in verse 37, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. 
And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him there. Amen. Amen. What, what does that tell us? It tells us that if you're a believer, amen, then there's nothing to hinder you from being baptized. As a matter of fact, it even, even says, as we were talking about before, if you're a believer and you know that your sins have been forgiven and, and you can have that testimony to testify to those around you that you've been forgiven, why wouldn't you want to be to testify that Jesus has cleansed me from my sins? Amen. 